Emotional House hearing on President Biden's botched Afghanistan withdrawal. A Marine sniper who survived the deadly bomber at Kabul's airport says he could have stopped the ISIS suicide bomber who killed 13 service members and countless Afghans. I request an engagement authority while my team leader was ready on the M110 semi-automatic sniper system. The response, leadership did not have the engagement authority for us. Do not engage. Plain and simple, we were ignored. Our expertise was disregarded. No one was held accountable for our safety. Then a flash <clears throat> and a massive wave of pressure. I'm thrown 12 feet onto the ground, but instantly knew what had happened. I opened my eyes to Marines dead or unconscious lying around me. The withdrawal, <clears throat> the withdrawal was a catastrophe in my opinion, and there was an ex inexcusable lack of accountability and negligence. So, Sandra, I mean, the actual policy decision isn't the argument here. Most of us have ex accepted that this war had to end, but it was how it was carried out. Um, you know, what are your thoughts on this? Negligence. I mean, yeah. it, it, extreme lack of accountability as a result. Plain and simple, we were ignored. That's heartbreaking testimony. Our expertise was disregarded. No one was held accountable for our safety. But let's now go to the nearly $7.2 billion worth of aircraft, guns, vehicle, ammunition, specialized equipment that has fallen into the hands of the Taliban. 78 aircraft worth $923 million. I mean, just think about that alone as a result of this chaotic withdrawal from Afghanistan. Furthermore, the Taliban's recruiting former Afghan military personnel. I mean, think about the actual real-world consequences this far out now that we are now suffering that has put us in jeopardy and us in peril as a result of that chaotic withdrawal. Mm -hmm. That's interesting, too. I was just thinking, uh, I was going to ask you about that, Jesse, about the equipment. Have we seen them use it yet, like the planes? Do we, are, are they just simply just, is it like... I doubt they have the expertise yeah. to fly our jets. Yeah. But they probably can use some of the artillery, mm -hmm. some of the tanks, some of the weaponry. But what was it? How many billions did we leave over there? Two. I mean, we probably could have taken that and then sold it to the Ukrainians and saved a little bit of a discount. And we do know that Putin saw that chaotic withdrawal and that encouraged him to invade Ukraine because he sensed weakness on behalf of the United States. So Biden cuts this side deal with the Taliban for the EVAC and says, we're not going to shoot you. You don't shoot us. Let's do this thing in Kabul. But there were no rules of engagement hammered out. So if someone saw a threat and they went up the food chain for approval, no one knew what to say. So none of these men needed to die. And then the State Department shuts down the processing of these guys in the planes at dark. Mm -hmm. So once the sun goes down, people start piling up at the airport around the barbed wire and they're trapped. And then it's chaos and they're slitting their throats against the barbed wire because they're too afraid to go back to the Taliban because that torture is going to be worse than the barbed wire. And no one's been fired. Mm -mm. And the Democrats never even really investigated this, did they? So we poured billions of dollars into this stupid country. We left the Taliban with tons of equipment. We have tons of people dead, wounded, no legs, no arms. I'm not sure we have a lot to show for it. So far, though, there hasn't been any of those over-horizon attacks that we were worried about if we ever did leave. Yeah. Judge, it's kind of sad, I mean, to know that, the, that, that he had had an eyeball on the homicidal bomber and it could have been prevented, but it wasn't. You know, this was a failure of epic proportions. This was a, an, a particular foreign policy disaster that will go down in history as one of the worst. The first was a decision to leave the Bagram Air Force Base, which was a protected, very sophisticated Air Force Base. They decide they're going to do the evacuation from the middle of a city in Kabul of four million people with one airway. Uh, and, the, and the truth is that this guy that was just testifying is minus limbs. He's had 44 surgeries. They had credible information of a potential suicide bomber. They actually had credible information, and they identified him. They had what they called the assured their leaders of the ease of fire. They had the, what, what do you call it, the M110 uh, sniper guy ready, and they didn't get an answer. 
Look, a cop in New York City has more of an ability to shoot <coughs> someone than we do in the in the in a war in the theater of war in in in, in Afghanistan, and that's the sad part of all this. So you've got 13 Gold Star families, you've got 170 Afghans who were killed as a result of an act that didn't have to happen. They could have stopped the suicide bomber, but they created the chaos. They picked the setting, and this guy Donahue is a two-star general. You know, we remember seeing him. He was the last guy to go on that C-130 or whatever it was. Nobody is accountable. Nobody's answerable. They make Donahue a three-star general of Fort Bragg, where this year I hear there's something like 109 uh, uh, people in the military who, who are dead, either from fentanyl, murder, suicide. Uh, it's a disaster. There's no accountability. And the sad part is, if they had rules of engagement, they could have taken it out and prevented it. All right, last word to you, Harold. Wars are messy. Uh, my, my prayers go out to this uh, Sergeant, uh, Marine Sergeant Tyler of Vargas Andrews. I think if you were to interview um, any military personnel after uh, a mistake has been made or after mistakes were made, you would, get, you would get testimony like this. In fact, our whole premise for going into Iraq in that uh, Saddam Hussein possessed weapons of mass destruction was wrong. It was faulty. Uh, so we have a history of making mistakes at critical times. This is not to blame anyone. This is not to suggest that anyone had the worst intentions or bad intentions. What I take from all of this, and I don't disagree, but we can, all of the things that have been said around the table, I take from, what do we learn from this? We're now, uh, our posture in Ukraine is essentially one of war where we're providing materials, personnel, I mean, technology and weaponry to go after Russia. We find China on the verge of perhaps invading Taiwan. What have we learned from these things? And I would ask perhaps the most, the second most immediate question from a national security standpoint, if Mexico cannot police its cartels, what is our military strategy to help? How do we learn from the, from the mistakes made in Afghanistan, the mistakes made in Iraq, and even mistakes we're making real time in Ukraine to ensure that going forward, we don't make the same mistakes. But, but the as problem is we always say lessons learned. Let's make someone accountable. If you've got credible information, eyes on the target, a, a crowded, chaotic theater, and you can take them out, but I don't need any lessons. Judge, we, I, need, we need a military you, and not a political decision. You know I were in that room, something. and I, I, there were mistakes made, but you know I were in that room as they listened to that evidence and made those decisions, those military personnel. They clearly made wrong ones or some ones that, that should, was could wrong. have been They could have made different ones, but I'm not going to second-guess someone when I was not in that room. All right. Well, I can second-guess 13 deaths of American servicemen and 170 Afghans. I regret it like you do, Judge. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.